Our 18th study in the book of Ezekiel brings us to Ezekiel chapter 29. Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Ezekiel 29 begins with a prophecy against Egypt. And it reads, In the tenth year, in the tenth month, in the twelfth day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Now it is 589 B.C., mid-December. It is one year after Babylon began to lay siege against Jerusalem. Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh king of Egypt, and prophesy against him, and against all Egypt. Speak and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh king of Egypt, the great monster that lieth in the midst of the, his rivers, which hath said, My river is my own, and I have made it for myself. Very arrogant. Again, did not appreciate the blessings that he had, that they came from God. Verse 4. But I will put hooks in thy jaws, and I will cause the fish of thy rivers to stick unto thy scales, and I will bring thee up out of the midst of thy rivers, and all the fish of thy rivers shall stick unto thy scales. And I will leave thee thrown into the wilderness, thee and all the fish of thy rivers. Thou shalt fall upon the open fields, thou shalt not be brought together, nor gathered. I have given thee for food to the beast of the field, and to the fowls of the heavens. And all the inhabitants of Egypt shall know that I am the Lord, because they have been a staff of reed to the house of Israel. When they took hold of thee by thy hand, thou didst break and tear all their shoulder. And when they leaned upon thee, thou didst break and madest all their inward parts to shake. Judah thought they could depend on Egypt for protection. They didn't have to repent and follow God because they used Egypt as their God, as their substitute protector. But Egypt proved to be very fragile. Very fragile support indeed, because Babylon defeated Egypt. How in the world were they going to help Israel? Verse 8. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will bring a sword upon thee, and cut off man and beast out of thee. And the land of Egypt shall be desolate and waste, and, shall, and they shall know that I am the Lord, because he hath said, The river is mine, and I have made it. <clears throat> and so God predicts a major defeat for Egypt, just as there would be a major defeat for Israel. And he tells us why. Again, in the, uh, he tells us why, last part of verse 9. He says, because he has said, the river is mine, and I have made it. Behold, therefore, I am against thee, and against thy rivers, and I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste and desolate from the tower of of Seveneth, even unto the border of Ethiopia. No foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast shall pass through it, neither shall it be inhabited forty years. And uh, they're going to lose the ma vast majority of their population, and therefore the vast majority of their wealth and greatness as well. Verse 12. And I will make the land of Egypt desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate and her cities among the cities that are laid waste shall be desolate forty years. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and will disperse them through the countries. Yet thus saith the Lord God, at the end of forty years will I gather the Egyptians from the people from among, from among whom they were scattered. And he says in verse 14, And I will bring them again, and I will bring again, excuse me, the captivity of Egypt, and will cause them to return into the land of Pathros, into the land of their habitation, and they shall be there a base kingdom. It shall be the basest of the kingdoms. Neither shall it exalt itself any more above the nations, for I will diminish them, that they shall no more rule over the nations. And it shall be no more the confidence of the house of Israel, which bringeth their iniquity to remembrance, when they shall look after them, but they shall know that I am the Lord God. So Egypt will be broken. They will regroup after 40 years. 
but they will never be the great empire that they had once been. And God word, God's word has certainly come to pass. Egypt is around, but they are, they are nothing compared to what they were way back before Ezekiel's time. Verse 17. And it came to pass in the seventh and twentieth year, in the first month, in the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, caused his army to serve a great service against Tyre. Every head was made bald, and every shoulder was rubbed raw. Yet had, yet had he no wages, nor his army for Tyre, for the service that he had served against it. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt unto Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall take her multitude, and take her spoil, and take her prey, and it shall be the wages for his army. I have given him the land of Egypt for his labor, for which he served against it, because they wrought for me, saith the Lord God. In that day I will cause the horn of the house of Israel to bud forth, and will give thee the opening of the mouth in the midst of them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So, unlike Egypt, Israel will regain and even surpass her former greatness, and thus will the people of the world know that Israel's God is God. But one other thing that I don't want to overlook is that, is that Babylon destroyed Tyre, and they were God's instrument of destruction to punish Tyre, but there were no spoils for Babylon, and the Bible says that the laborer is worthy of, his, of their pay, and that bothered God that they didn't get any, they didn't get any pay for doing his work. Now these are ungodly people too, and yet God used them as an instrument, and that's how strongly God feels about people being paid for their work. And so he says, I'm going to give them Egypt. I'll give them the spoils of Egypt, because they're going to get their pay. I use them, so they're going to be recompensed. They're going to be repaid for that. So it's very important that workers receive their wages. That's a very down-to-earth issue, but it's something that is extremely important to God. Now, let's go into chapter 30. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Wail ye, alas, for the day. Now, this is a lamentation over Egypt's fall. For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near, a cloudy day. It shall be the time of the nations, and the sword shall come upon Egypt, and great pain shall be in Ethiopia, when the slain shall fall in Egypt, and they shall take away her multitude, and her foundations shall be broken down, Ethiopia, and Put, and Lud, and all the mingled people, and Kub, and the men of the land that is in league shall fall with them by the sword. Thus saith the Lord, They also that uphold Egypt shall fall, and the pride of her power shall come down. From the tower of Seveneth shall they fall in, fall in it by the sword, saith the Lord God. And they shall be desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate, and her cities shall be in the midst of the cities that are wasted. And they shall know that I am the Lord, when I have set a fire in Egypt, and when all her helpers shall be destroyed, in that day shall messengers go forth from me in ships to make the careless Ethiopians afraid. And great pain shall come upon them, as in the day of Egypt, for lo, it cometh. And so God's judgment is going to spread like wildfire against Egypt and against all the other nations who were like her and aligned with her. 10. Thus saith the Lord God, I will also make the multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He and his people with him, the terrible of the nations, shall be brought to destroy the land, and they shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. And I will make the rivers dry and sell the land into the hand of the wicked, and I will make the land waste and all that is in it by the hand of, the, of foreigners. I, the Lord, have spoken." And so God will use Babylon to make Egypt desolate. Verse 13. Thus saith the Lord God, I will also destroy the idols, and I will cause their images to cease from Memphis, 
and there shall be no more a prince in the land of Egypt, and I will put a fear in the land of Egypt, and I will make Pathros desolate, and I will set fire in Zoan, and will execute judgments in No, and I will pour my fury upon Sin, the strength of Egypt, and I will cut off the multitude of No, and I will set fire in Egypt, Sin shall have great pain, and no shall be torn asunder, and Memphis shall have distresses daily. The young men of Avon and of Pi Beseth shall fall by the sword, and these cities shall go into captivity. Ar Tephanes also. The day shall be darkened, when I shall break there the yokes of Egypt, and the pomp of her strength shall cease in her. As for her, a cloud shall cover her, and her daughters shall go into captivity. Thus I will execute judgments in Egypt, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And so by the time God finishes knocking Egypt down to size, they will know that God is God, and they will also know that their idols are nothing. And God, God punishes nations who do not honor him, because this is his world. And we move on now to verse 20. And it, and it came to pass, and by the way, this is God's promises to Babylon uh, for victory over Egypt. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first month, in the seventh day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and lo, it shall not be bound up to be healed, to put a bandage to bind, or to make it strong to hold the sword. So he broke the power of the mighty Egyptian nation. And it was powerful at one point. 22. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and I will break his arms, the strong, and that which was broken, and I will cause the sword to fall out of his hand. You know, you, you can have the greatest army in the world, but if God is against you, you're in big trouble as a nation. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations, and will disperse them through the countries. And I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, and put my sword in his hand. And I will break Pharaoh's arms, and he shall groan before him with the groanings of a deadly wounded man. But I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, and the arms of Pharaoh shall fall down. And they shall know that I am the Lord, when I shall have put my sword into the hand of the king of Babylon, and shall stretch it out upon the land of Egypt. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations, and disperse them among the countries, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And that sure, sure is a reoccurring uh, statement, isn't it? Throughout all these, these predictions, prophecies of doom for these ungodly nations, God continues to say, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And that's because, you see, they all had these false gods that they worshipped, and they thought that Israel... Israel's God was just well, just another God. Well, he isn't. He is the Lord. And when they were defeated, after the prophecies that they would be defeated, well, then, then they knew, wait, Israel's God is God. There's no question about it. Now, as we go into chapter 31, we are going to be looking at a parable, parable of the cedar of Lebanon, and uh, let's begin in verse 1. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Now it is 588 B.C., shortly before Pentecost would have taken place, if the Israelites would have been in the land. Verse 2. Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude, whom art thou like in thy greatness, whom art thou like in thy greatness? Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud and of a high stature, and its top was among the thick bows. The waters made it great. The deep set it up on high with its rivers running around about its plants and sent out its little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Therefore 
its height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and its boles were multiplied, and its branches became long because of the multitude of waters, when it shot forth. All the fowls of the heavens made their nest in its boughs, and under its branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under its shadow dwelt all great nations. Assyria this is referring to. And Assyria had once been a, a huge empire. They were really, I would say, the world's first superpower. It may have been Egypt, but Assyria followed Egypt. And they were, they were big. And they became the great protector nation of many other countries who would submit to them. 7. Thus was it fair in its greatness, in the length of its branches, for its root was by great waters. The cedars of the garden of God could not hide it. The fir trees were not like its boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like its branches. Nor was any tree in the garden of God like unto it in its beauty. I have made it fair by the multitude of its branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied it. God is the one who allowed Syria, Assyria I should say, to become great. Verse 10. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Because thou hast lifted up thyself in height, and he hath, not, and he hath shot up his top among the thick bows, and his heart is lifted up in his height, I have therefore delivered him into the hand of the mighty one of the nations. He shall surely deal with him. I have driven him out for his wickedness. And strangers, the terrible of the nations, have cut him off, and have left him. Upon the mountains, and in all the valleys, his branches are fallen, and his bows are broken by all the rivers of the land, and all the people of the earth are gone down from his shadow, and have left him. Upon his ruin shall be the fowls of the heavens, shall the fowls of the heavens remain, and all the beasts of the field shall be upon his branches, to the end that none of all the trees by the waters exalt themselves for their height, neither shoot up their top among the thick boughs, neither their trees stand up in their height, all that drink water. For they are all delivered unto death, to the lower parts of the earth, in the midst of the children of men, with those who go down to the pit. God is saying, Hey, Egypt, do you remember how great and powerful Assyria was? Well, they were destroyed because they did not honor me. Now, you should have learned from the folly of Assyria, Egypt. But you didn't. So if they could not withstand my wrath, what do you think? How do you think you're going to withstand it? 15. Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when he went down to Sheol, I caused the mourning. I covered the deep for him, and I restrained his floods. And the great waters were stayed. And I caused Lebanon to mourn for him, and all the trees of the field fainted for him. I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall, when I cast him down to Sheol, with those who descend into the pit, and all the trees of Eden, the choice and the best of Lebanon, all that drink water, shall be comforted in the lower parts of the earth. They also went down into Sheol with him, unto those who are slain with the sword, and they that were his arm, who dwelt under his shadow in the midst of the nations, to whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shalt thou be brought down with the trees of Eden unto the lower parts of the earth. Thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with those who are slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. What a frightening thing to have God say this to you if you're a king and concerning your nation. And God is saying, Egypt, you're nothing compared to what Assyria once was. So you better think about it. And you better you better understand my wrath. You better think about it. You better know what my wrath is all about and how powerful it is because you're never going to withstand it. Next time, chapter 32, until then, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.